If there ever was such a thing as a company that could do almost anything, well, Tenneke Properties is it. These guys know how to completely transform your existing home into something new or just do it room by room. That's Tenneke Properties. Visit Tenneke.com or phone 931-244-4602. From the Tennessee Valley Weather Channel, this is your evening update. Sunny skies and beautiful conditions across the Tennessee Valley on this Monday. Here's a look at the regional satellite showing barely a cloud in the sky across the area. High pressure in control of the forecast. Now we have the cold front that moved through overnight down to our south. And that has made a difference in the weather across the area today. Check this out. Only 75 for a daytime high today at the Lawrenceburg Airport. After a morning low of 61, Muscle Shoals Airport briefly snuck to 82 but like we talked about last week and over the weekend, we know that that reporting station tends to run a few degrees warmer than all the other reporting stations around it. Most folks in the shoals were actually still in the upper 70s for daytime highs today. And we're generally going to be in the mid to upper 70s to lower 80s here for the next seven days as we have a more fall-like air mass that settled into the area. Future cast as we head through tonight, clear skies out there. Now, Futurecast lightens the winds a little more than I expect during the overnight. That's one has widespread mid to upper 40s for overnight lows. I do expect the winds to stay up and breezy a little bit during the overnight, and that keeps the lower atmosphere mixed. So I'm expecting more like upper 40s to lower 50s across the area with isolated mid 40s. But if the winds do settle down a little bit toward daybreak, these temperatures may be closer to accurate, and it's not that big of a difference anyway compared to what we expect here in the forecast office. Sunny skies as we head on through our Tuesday. Breezy northeast winds once again of 10 to 15 miles per hour. Isolated gusts to 20 in the afternoon. Daytime highs up into the mid to upper 70s. Most of us staying shy of 80 degrees, I think, falling back through the 60s and the 50s tomorrow night. Now, the winds settle down a little bit more late tomorrow night compared to tonight. I do think that allows more widespread 40s and mid to upper 40s as we head into tomorrow night toward daybreak on Wednesday. High pressure in control of the forecast here the next several days. Mostly sunny skies, just a few clouds at times. No rain chances here through not just the rest of the week. But through the next seven days here, we don't have any rain chances on the board. Daytime highs here through the weekend, staying in the mid to upper 70s, getting closer to the lower 80s late in the weekend, ahead of another cold front that comes in early next week. We're into that weather pattern now as we expect in October, where we start getting more frequent and more meaningful cold fronts come down into the area. Here's the latest satellite look at powerful Category 5 Hurricane Milton in the south central Gulf of Mexico. Moving eastward this afternoon, it's exploded rapidly in development and intensity today. Here's the latest advisory and track from the National Hurricane Center as of 4 p.m. Central time this afternoon, maximum sustained winds were estimated at 180 miles per hour. Hurricane hunters are on the way to fly in there to get actual observations for the evening. Pressure down to... 905 millibars, which puts this into the upper echelon of Gulf of Mexico hurricanes moving east at 10 miles per hour. It will make a little more of a northeastern turn over the next day or so toward the west coast of Florida. Latest projection is a landfall near Tampa. Don't focus specifically on Tampa, but a landfall near Tampa on the west coast late Wednesday night as an upper end category three hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. That's in terms of wind. When you look at that, there are two things to remember. Even if it does step down this much because it encounters wind shear, the storm surge will not step down that much because of so much momentum over the open water. This will still have the same kind of storm surge you would expect from a Category 4 or higher hurricane making landfall. We've seen that several times over the years like Katrina and other similar systems. Number two... I do expect it to encounter some wind shear and lose a little bit of intensity as it gets close to landfall. However, exactly the strength that will be at landfall is somewhat tied into how strong it gets over the next 24 hours. The stronger Milton gets over the next 12 to 24 hours, the higher it has to come down from when it does start weakening. So that's a question mark right now. I do think upper end category three or lower end category four landfall 
is the most likely scenario. However, that's not a complete guarantee. It could be a tick stronger than that. And it's not too much of a, of a difference whether it is or not. We're still talking about life-threatening storm surge on the west coast of Florida, in addition to widespread damaging winds and the potential for flooding. And then it continues on off into the western Atlantic here as it merges in with the jet stream late in the week. Now, the reason why Milton is tracking the way it is, you know, most of the time when we're tracking hurricanes deeper into the heart of the season, in the summer, they usually move south to north or they move more westward. We're starting to get into the time of the year now where cold fronts and upper level systems start coming southward across the United States and grab these systems. And we have one such right now over the eastern United States. That's what's provided our cold front here in the Tennessee Valley. That's giving more of a westerly wind in the upstairs across Florida. In addition, we have upper level high pressure down over the Caribbean that's also providing a more southwest to westerly flow here in the upper level. So that's why you're getting more of a west to east track with Milton versus what you would otherwise see earlier in the season. This will not turn northward toward the northern Gulf Coast. It will not turn northward toward those Elliot toward, toward those areas that were impacted by Helene just a couple weeks ago dropping down through the 60s into the 50s as we into the overnight and then upper 40s to lower 50s toward daybreak clear skies out there 70s here for the next few days mid to upper 70s can't rule out a few folks near 80 degrees you know how that works in afternoons mostly sunny skies overnight lows in the mid to upper 40s here through the week those gradually moderate back into the 50s over the weekend and then we have another cool front coming toward the first part of next week there's Luke's latest seven-day forecast. I'll be back at 9 o'clock for a final check of your local weather.